In this video, we are going to process airborne LiDAR data using CHC Nalco Pre. First, we want, <coughs> we want to s copy the static data from our base to our raw data folder, and it's under GPS and base. Uh, then we're going to create a new project. Let's call it uh, test. Then we can select project data from disk. Uh, we can select several projects at once ho by holding control keyboard. And then we can choose the units. We can choose meters or feet. Let's create the project. And then we can choose the coordinate system. There are predefined coordinate systems already, so we're, we're going to choose Canada, Alberta, and UTM-12. You can change different parameters of the coordinate system, but we're not going to do it this time, so we just select the GeoID model, and leave the interpolation method uh, to spline. Okay, press OK. Uh, it's going to load the project. Now we're going to solve the POS means IMU and GPS solution. Uh, you can change the coordinates and it, these are from the header of the static data. Uh, we're going to fast forward, so it's going to do POS solve. And now we can generate a report to see the quality of our data. Let's open the report, and there we can see how many satellites used solution and all kinds of information for the view. You can s save it for the records. And of course you can see it uh, in the software itself. Uh, now we're going to do display trajectory. Click right button. Uh, the red one is selected one, so we're going to select where we want to process the LiDAR data. The sharp turns are by default unselected. If you by mistake select some you don't want, you just press right button and undo the selection. So this one looks good. Let's do the data solve. Here we have advanced settings for picture processing and colorization. Uh, we can remove unshaded points if we want and strip adjustment. And then there are some advanced settings, <coughs> like filters, 3D distance, intensity, uh, height distance, mm, general noise filtering, and then 2D distance filtering. There is a description for each. And we can do the tower shadow if, if there are towers in our scan data. You can change the sampling rate. And let's generate report two. Okay, <coughs> we're going to fast forward again. So it will load the point cloud. On the left, you can see the trajectory. The red one is processed, and we can review the point cloud. We can switch between RGB intensity or mixed uh, elevation plus uh, plus plus intensity. Uh, we can check if, if we s see some discrepancies or, or some slices, but usually it looks good to me. Let's do a vertical slice. Or hard surface, road, those are different times, different colors. And we can see it's 20 mils only, the thickness of the point cloud. Let's do another one. Yeah, we can clearly see four electrical wires and let's see what's the dense the thickness it's again just 20 mils around let's do another one a little over railroad yeah you can see both rails clearly visible in a point cloud <coughs> so it looks good let's do the ground control point check let's import our survey points choose the coordinate system Skip the first line, press OK. So it will import those points. Now we can see them where they're located. Uh, 
and then we can change the point type. Let's select them and set point type. Let's refine our checkpoint. We'll do checkpoints here and height points as we don't have targets, just the ground shots. And do the height matching auto and it will look for the points averaged uh, within 30 centimeters around the point. <coughs> Okay, it found it. Now we do the check. So it's even below one centimeter. One is a little higher. We can double check if there's something close, like the branches or some wires. Doesn't look like that. Let's do a slice. Yeah, didn't see any anomalies. So. It's acceptable. We can export uh, the res uh, for the result for our records. <coughs> now what we can do is do a strip adjustment, uh, just altitude or altitude and position. But we didn't see any slices, so we won't do it here. Like no, no need for doing strip adjustment. Next, what we can click on the camera on the left side and on the picture, so we can review how the colorization is done. Like we can see each individual individual picture overlaid with the point cloud. So we can review that one too. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do uh, IR triangulation for the photo map. Let's choose plane. And now we can review the results. We can store it for our records. Let's see the matched points and the calibration of the camera. Let's uh, see those tie points. So we can see all the all dots are green, so all pictures are used for the IRO triangulation. Mm. Uh, let's create a photo map. We can change resolution and leave high quality. Okay, let's fast forward and load the photo map. So there is the photo map, we can view it. So we, we don't have really high side overlap, so it's not going to be very. So then we can export our data. We can choose the file size, distance, trajectory. Uh, in this case, we're going to use the file size in a single file. So we just add nines and export camera too for processing another software like Agisoft Metashape. So now we can review the data. So there's camera, all the images with text files where we have information of the coordinates and timestamp and related to each picture. And in the bottom we have cam camera parameters. If we want to use that in uh, Bentley iTwin or other software and export format shape for direct ins uh, import. And then we have scanner data, so we have LAS file we exported, 16 gigs, a trajectory file, and KML file. So in a trajectory file there's latitude, longitude, all, all, all you need to process it further in other software. And that's it. Thank you for watching.